And I'm delighted to talk about my favorite uh, topic today. It's uh, the Long Island Pine Barrens. And the question I think on everybody's mind is, uh, what's that have to do with uh, water matters? Well, the answer is that if water matters, the Pine Barrens matters a lot as well. Um, the Pine Barrens sit atop the greatest quantities of the purest water on Long Island. That's both drinking water and surface water. All of that water, as you know, uh, lies beneath our feet, and the human activity on the surface um, is going to have impact on what it is that ends up in that water. And one of the principal culprits is, uh, is nitrogen, and it is uh, wrecking havoc with our bays and our beaches and our um, surface waters, our drinking water, all of it uh, being adversely impacted. We put three million people on the top of a finite island, and um, we didn't really figure out how we were going to make sure that we didn't exceed the carrying capacity of that island, how we were going to deal with our waste entering our source of our most important commodity, water. Fortunately, um, uh, the good Lord did. He created the Long Island Pine Barrens. It uh, uh, was created roughly uh, 15,000 years ago, um, finally topped off by the last uh, glacier. And um, it is a pitch pine scrub oak woodland that once covered 250,000 of the uh, million acres that is uh, Long Island. And uh, it's turned out to be uh, not only Long Island's premier ecosystem, but a godsend when it comes to water. This is roughly where the Pine Barrens are, extending from roughly Route 112 in Medford in the town of Brookhaven, extending into um, Riverhead Town, down Peconic River to Peconic Bay, and out on Southampton to the Shinnecock Canal. Um, say, once it used to cover a quarter of Long Island's landscape, uh, by 1989, uh, we were down to about 125,000 acres left. And at that point, um, we were in trouble. These pitch pines and scrub oaks, well, they sat above this poor sandy soil that boasts the greatest of biodiversity anywhere uh, in the state of New York. So it was a wonderful natural treasure, a great place uh, for hiking. Um, we had a vision that it would also be a great place for a preserve. But most important of all, it sat atop the purest drinking water source, the purest groundwater source, and none of the activities there were compromising water quality, and it was becoming increasingly clear even then that we were facing ultimately a water quality challenge if we did not preserve some place where the water was pure. And that was the Long Island Pine Barrens. Um, it's a, a terrific place. If you haven't been out to hike and, um, and explore, um, do it. It was a battle worth fighting for, and I want to talk a little bit about that battle because the battle we're facing uh, concerning the quality of drinking and surface waters is very, very comparable to the big battle that occurred back in 1989. Uh, the Pine Barrens, we said, is sit atop that uh, drinking water aquifer system, and you've probably seen it before, the model of the upper glacial and the Magathy and the Lloyd aquifer system all of it providing pure, fresh drinking water, but the upper glacial increasingly contaminated. We're turning more and more for drinking water to the Magathy Aquifer. So these little trees that are sitting on top of this are doing something other than providing our homes for the birds. Uh, they're helping us remain in our home. Uh, and there's a, really a, an absolute great diversity. You see um, uh, plants and animals on Long Island that. Uh, uh, most people who live in suburbia uh, just don't even know are here. But what we faced in 1989 was a total of 234 separate projects, development projects in Brookhaven, Riverhead, and Southampton. And the towns were approving them one at a time as if one didn't impact the other. And the Pine Barren Society came forward and said, for environmental law to make any sense, you have to look at the collective efforts of all that you're doing, not just say, this strip mall over here or this residential subdivision over there won't hurt anything. We have to consider the impact of all 234. And so the Pine Barren Society decided that we need to challenge what they were doing in court. And so we did. Um, this is the, the scene that was set for a major legal battle, it was to result in the largest environmental lawsuit in the history of New York State, then 
and to this day, um, covering all of these projects that would have destroyed 43,000 of the remaining 125,000 acres and basically turned the Pine Barrens into a piece of Swiss cheese, all cut up so that it didn't even function as an ecosystem anymore. Uh, and you can just see in the period from 1962 to 1995, look at all of the development that just moved over us west to east. And then there's that little pocket at the bottom image there uh, of the bright spot, and the bright spot is our Pine Barrens, and if you looked at it today, it would look exactly that way. The Pine Barrens Society brought the largest environmental lawsuit in the history of the state of New York on November 21st, 1989, and it stopped on that day all 234 projects, and you can imagine the roaring reaction from the developers and some other folks who had just never ever considered this kind of thing before. And our argument was that you had to consider the collective impacts of all 234 before you could approve any. This lawsuit stopped all development in the Pine Barrens for two years a total of $5.6 billion of real estate in 1989 money. Um, it was called the War Over the Woods. It ended up in Supreme Court in Suffolk County, Long Island, the lowest court in, in the system is the Supreme Court. And we lost that case in the Supreme Court. The judge said, I can't find anything in the law that says they have to look at everything. We knew that that was a real possibility, so we had already anticipated going to the appellate division um, that deals with more generalized cases, cases that have more uh, human impact than just everyday squabbles. And miraculously, but not surprisingly to us, the appellate court overturned the lower court decision and said, no, the, for, for environmental law to make any sense whatsoever, we absolutely have to have an overview, a cumulative impact assessment. Um, needless to say, the developers and the towns who we challenged that were approving these projects went to the Court of Appeals. Did we win? Well, not exactly. The Court of Appeals basically punted and said, look, they're not getting it right. We do have a threat to the aquifer system. The people's water supply is in jeopardy we as jurists can't just cobble together a bunch of unassociated laws. The state legislature must pass a bill to protect the Pine Barrens and build into it the requirement that everything be considered, not just one or two things. We worked to bring the two sides together during the winter of 1993. And in that legislative session, there were opponents and supporters, but increasingly the developers, frustrated by, by the fact that they were still not able to build, were willing to make concessions. And so what we did is we negotiated that the areas that were already developed could be developed, but only carefully, and the core area, the central undeveloped land, the land important to us today, mostly because that's where the cleanest water is and remains, that could not be developed at all. And that is a total of 53,000 acres. 47,000 acres can be developed, but only under strict regulation. And it's been in place now for more than 20 years, and it seems to be working. This was passed by the New York legislature unanimously. That doesn't happen much anymore. Um, but it was so important to the public that we get that part right. Um, people. Uh, even the developers themselves, but politicians from the right and from the left um, here, uh, people like Senator Ken Laval, uh, Assemblyman uh, Tom DiNapoli at the time, he's now the state controller, uh, uh, hovering above uh, Governor Cuomo, uh, who signed it into law that day, and a celebration, a veritable celebration in the press, radio, television, citizens coming out for the occasion to celebrate that we had finally it was almost as though a collective will of the public had emerged in saying, the pavement stops here. We cannot continue to pave from west to east an unending series of developments that increase the cost of taxes for new government services, for schools and roads, all of what are bringing our taxes up 
And at the very same time, they're compromising the most basic commodity that is required for us to have an economic um, and an environmental health. So it was very, very well received. Hailed as the Pine Barrens is saved. By the way, I should tell you that um, nothing is ever quite finished. Um, we have to continue to monitor the work of the New York State Pine Barrens Commission. It's uh, composed of the supervisors of the towns of Brookhaven, Riverhead, and Southampton, someone representing the governor, someone representing the Suffolk County Executive. They meet monthly and review applications, make sure that this law is being provided, and of course we're there looking over their shoulder to make sure that they're getting it right. But the wonderful thing about it is that the public then had to buy the land. The public was being asked then to preserve the land. In this country we don't take land from people. We have to provide just compensation. What I am delighted to tell you is that the people of Long Island are among the most environmental people in this country. And they voted to create the Suffolk County Drinking Water Protection Program, which uses a quarter of a penny in sales tax. And it was used along with the State Environmental Protection Fund, other county and town funds, to begin parcel by parcel, owner by owner, compensating them to the tune of three quarters of a billion dollars. Wow, given the anti-tax sentiment that we experience all the time, you'd think the public had pushed back hard against it. They voted by referendum 84% strong to support that because they care about water and they care about water more than anything else in the environment. All of the focus on taxes and economy and business and growth fade to obscurity when we deal with water. The public is squarely behind whatever it takes, and already we're beginning to poll. How do they feel now when those polls are reinforcing our commitment that if we give good water protection laws to the people, they will support them? And the Pine Barrens today, the Commission is working just as hard as ever to improve the quality of the Pine Barrens as an ecosystem and to make sure that its protection of water remains paramount.